Good evening, everybody. Hope you've had a good day. I've got a glass of wine now with a hibiscus flower in the bottom, like you do. Um, not coffee tonight. Hope you've had a good day. We've um, we have we've had a good day. Terence has been cutting a ladder up outside, like you do, and I've been outside painting um, a table and chairs. Hopefully, we'll get to sit out on um, over the next few weeks. Um, I'm thankful for another day. Um, I've caught up with family today and after this I am going to be um, going on a video chat with some friends. Um, so I'm taking the challenge on board myself of what I set everybody this morning. So tonight we are looking at Acts chapter 18. Um, we're continuing the story of Paul travelling. He's travelled from Athens to Corinth um, and he's arrived at the house of Aquila and Priscilla. I think that's fantastic names. Uh, there's some fantastic names in the Bible, uh, but Aquila and Priscilla um, are two of those. So Paul's trade uh, was that he was a tent maker. So he was allowed to travel uh, wherever he wanted, pretty much wherever he wanted, uh, making tents for soldiers um, uh, and etc. So he's um, gone to Corinth. After so it's Acts chapter eighteen verses one to ten. After Athens, Paul went to Corinth. That is where he discovered Aquila, a Jew born in Pontus, and his wife Priscilla. I'm reading out of the Message Bible tonight, and then I'm going to pull a few things out. They had just arrived from Italy, part of the general expulsion of Jews from Rome ordered by Claudius. He'd ordered all the Jews out of Rome and so they were scattered all over the place. Paul moved in with them and they worked together at their common trade of tent making. But every Sabbath he was at the meeting place doing his best to convince both Jews and Greeks about Jesus. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was able to give all his time to preaching and teaching doing everything he could to persuade the Jews that Jesus was in fact God's Messiah. But no such luck. All they did was argue contentiously and contra contradict him at every turn. Totally exasperated, Paul had finally had it. He'd had enough and he gave it up as a bad job. Have it your way, he said. You've made your bed, now lie in it. For now I... From now on, I'm spending my time with other nations. So he'd had enough. He was ready to move on um, and leave Corinth. He walked out and went to the home of Titus Justus, a God-fearing man who lived right next door to the Jews' meeting place. But Paul's efforts with the Jews weren't a total loss. For Crispus, the meeting place president, put his trust in the master, put his trust in God. His entire family believed him. And in the course of listening to Paul, a great many Corinthians believed and were baptised. And one night, the master, so one night God spoke to Paul in a dream. Keep it up and don't let anybody intimidate or silence you. No matter what happens, I'm with you. And no one is going to be able to hurt you. You have no idea how many people I have on my side in this city. And that was all he needed to stick it out. He stayed another year and a half faithfully teaching the word of God to the Corinthians. So in those days, Corinth was the political and commercial centre of Greece. It's a really important place, but had a reputation a really bad reputation for wickedness and immorality, which you can read about um, if you choose to. Paul found Corinth both a challenge and a great ministry opportunity at the same time. They were both sides of the same coin. Challenge, um, but great opportunity um, as well. Later, in fact, you can see it in the next few books of the Bible. He would write a series of letters to the Corinthians. But in a vision, Christ, or Jesus, told Paul that he had many people in Corinth. I think sometimes we can feel alone or isolated, especially 
especially at this moment in time, but especially when we feel that we can't see God around us. Whether that's at work, whether that's at home, whether that's in your family, but we've no idea who's around us. And likewise, what part we can play in somebody else's journey. I'd encourage you tonight and over the next few days to pray for God to reveal people to you who you are around, who need God's input, and where you can be the voice to them in their time of need. But I just want to come back to Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla met Paul um, during his second missionary journey. Now what you've got to remember is that um, Aquila and Priscilla were originally from Rome, but they were Jews and they were um, sent from Rome out, go leave Rome, this is no longer your home. And they'd settled in Corinth, starting from scratch, they didn't know anybody. Um, but they met this strange guy, Paul, who was a tent maker, the same as Aquila, and they invited him into their home to stay with them. Paul wasn't hugely popular. He was trying to convince Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. And all they were doing was arguing with him. But they welcomed him in and looked after him. You never hear in the Bible, you don't hear of Aquila and Priscilla being um, spoke about separately. They were very much a together couple. Um, but they provided Paul with a warm place. They provided Paul with a place that he could feel safe in. And they learned from him. The Bible says that they um, took his teachings on board. Their hospitality opened the doorway to salvation for many. And that's an easy thing for any one of us to do, is to use our homes as a place of comfort for others, use our homes as um, a place of warmth where other people can come to and be known for your hospitality. At the moment, we can't invite people into our houses because we are... Um, social distancing and keeping away from people but you can plan for how you can use your home um, to speak to other people and that just may be by extending a hand of friendship that could be by just providing somebody with a cup of tea and a piece of cake and somewhere to somebody to talk to or it can be hosting a big party um, where you invite lots of people um, to just come and share in um, what you've got. You've no idea, um, the people around you, what part you play in their journey that is called life. Um, you don't know the end from the beginning. And I've heard lots of messages over my life that speak about the seeds that you sow, that you have no idea um, what happens to those seeds in somebody's life. But the fact that you are open um, to being used by God um, in somebody else's life, I think is an incredible privilege. So I'd encourage you to connect. Um, as we said this morning, I encourage you to, if you think of somebody um, or somebody comes to your mind, give them a call, video chat them, pray for them, invite them into your home when we get out of this period of isolation. Have a great evening. And we look forward to connecting with you again in the morning at 11 o'clock on all the various different um, methods that are being used to um, show tomorrow morning's meeting. See you everybody. Bye bye.